Okay, we'll start by uh, cr turning on our textures and also our lights and also our shadow and even our ambient occlusion. Um, so the first step is to create some animated cameras. So I will, I've already got one camera set up, so I'll show you how we set that up. So we go into camera and select create a camera and then we can go to perspective and select the camera that we want to use or look through selected item if we've got it still selected. So then positioning the camera, an easy way to do this is to select something you want to focus on press F on the camera, uh, F on the keyboard, and then you'll be able to pivot around that point. So setting up the um, uh, render, we can click on this item here, resolution gate, um, rather than film grade. So the film grade's a different aspect ratio. Uh, resolution gate is what we want to utilize. So this can be our first frame. So having the camera selected, I'll press S on the keyboard and then I'll move to say frame 20 and uh, I'll just pull back a bit like so. Maybe move up a little bit as well. Make sure I've got the camera selected again. Press S again and now I've got two keyframes in, in that space. Um, I'll I'm going to create another camera as well. This time it will be a close-up. So we'll go create camera and I'll look through that camera as well like so. And this time I'm going to start with something like that. Maybe it's just going to go across. So I'll start at frame 1 S, I'll go to frame 120 again, move it across, press S again, and now I've got this uh, quite simple animation. Now I don't like the uh, translate, and I'm also going to break the rotations. So I don't want any rotations on my animation here. Break connections, there we go. Um, Z's fine and also so I've just got it going across is what I want. Okay so there's a couple other things uh, we can do here. Notice the background is uh, being clipped out at the moment so I'll just go into my camera my camera attributes and if I increase my far clipping plane I'll be able to see all my scene including this uh, sky dome um, sphere in the backdrop. Let's just improve the look and feel of this scene so notice at the edges here we've got these um, anti-aliasing. We can improve that by clicking on the uh, anti-alias um, uh, button, multi-sampling anti-aliasing, and that's going to improve it. The other things that we can do is inside the camera itself, so I've got camera 4 selected, I can come down to depth of field and I can enable the depth of field. This is going to make things blurry in the background and so forth. The uh, larger the f-stop, the, the wider the, the, the focal, focal area is, um, but we have to indicate what distance we want it to be in. So I'll just start with uh, 5 on uh, the f-stop. Now, to get the distance, I can select an object in my scene, go up to uh, Display, Head Up Display, and say Object Detail. And in that, I've got distance from camera 29.17 so going back to our depth of field if I type in uh, 29.1 then that area is going to be in focus now the f-stop if I have a small f-stop less is going to be in focus if I have wider f-stop more is going to be in focus so let's go for something you know mid-range so maybe like uh, 11 and we might even uh, increase that into uh, 22 let's say so now our backgrounds in, fo in out of focus and our foreground objects are in focus so it helps to like um, uh, focus in on you know particular subject matter so there we go that looks looks pretty good 
Uh, the other thing we can do is have motion blur. So let's go back to, say, uh, camera 2, and let's get uh, this happening a lot quicker, like the movement. So at the moment, if I play that, um, let's make sure it's in real time. So I'll click on the timeline, go to playback speed, uh, play every frame free. No, we want it to play real time. So if we play that now, we can see what that's looking like in real time. Um, which is a bit slow. So I will select my camera 2. There it is there. And I'll click and drag to select the keyframe. I'm going to move it closer to the first keyframe. So when I play it now, it's going to happen quite quickly. Okay. So what we're going to do now is create... I'll just turn off uh, the safety title safe um, guide. Uh, so what we're going to do now is put in motion blur. So it's this little icon here, if you turn on that, and now we can see a motion blur preview or in the viewport 2.0. So if I even increase the speed of it, just so you can really see it happening. So if you've got like quick camera movements, then we're going to get this uh, nice motion blur happening on our scene, which looks pretty good. So I'll just increase the time so it's a little bit goes over two seconds. So the longer the time, the less motion blur, but um, it will still get that little bit more realism happening in our scene. Now, if we want to zoom in on our, if we want to zoom in on a resolution gate. What we can do is press backslash and then right mouse button and that's going to move our resolution gate so it takes up most of the frame so we can see what's going on a little bit better in here. Okay, so there I've uh, set up two or three cameras. Uh, I've got my original sort of camera which uh, doesn't have any animation on it, like so. But the main ones I want to look at is camera 2, the backdrop there, and camera 4. So that's looking good. So now what we're going to do is look at how we set up our render settings to do batch rendering.